Good day, everyone. My name is John Eric Padilla. I'm Marielle Bayano, a third year student from Amanda Coffee College. The topic that we're about to discuss is all about polar and nonpolar. When we define these two words in a simple term, polar defined as opposing, and nonpolar is not opposing. And at the end of the discussion, my partner will give you a short quiz to some of the learning about this video. So are you ready? Let's tackle first all about polar. When we first hear the word polar, we often commit mistake and assume that it is indeed a polar bear. But in a structure, polar occurs when the dipole moment opposed for conflict with charges on the other sides, meaning they're in a symmetrical range. For those persons who don't know what dipole moment is, Let's take this example, where hydrogen and chlorine are the elements present in a symbol with an arrow with a like cross, showing there's an attainment or transfer of partially positive charges of hydrogen to partially negative charges of chlorine. Because chlorine has a greater number of its electron activity than hydrogen. So, to define dipole moment, it occurs whenever there's a separation of positive and negative charges. So what is exactly electron activity? So I will show you this periodic table. In the given elements earlier, the atomic number of hydrogen is on the left side, and on the right side, the atomic number of 17 is chlorine. You will see that in their number of electron activity from left to right and from top to bottom, it is increasing, and vice versa, it is decreasing. So in general, elements with greater number of electron negativity has the tendency to attract electrons. So let me show you the given elements earlier, the chlorine and the hydrogen. Hydrogen, having its electron negativity is 2.1, and chlorine is 3.1. So now you see that chlorine having a greater number than hydrogen. That's why the attainment of transfer of partially positive is transferred to partially negative to chlorine. So let me take you for an example. Water. Water is the most basic example and most common and poor substance. Why is it? Because maybe because their empirical formula is H2O? No. Or maybe because let's concentrate on the oxygen atom in the center, then the two hydrogen atoms and from both sides. Let's draw a quadrant. Oxygen having the electron negativity of 3.4 and hydrogen atoms is 2.1. So now you see in difference in the two elements, oxygen having a greater number and electron ne negativity than to the two hydrogen atoms. So which direction of the dipole moment do you think we go? From bottom left and from bottom right. Now remember, dipole moment will occur if there's a separation of charges. Now, and also remember that polar is conflicting the other side. You notice that in this structure, the top left and the top right is in complex structure. So that's the way how you determine the polar substance. Next, we have the nonpolar. Obviously, nonpolar is in the opposite of polar because their molecules in the constant not having a dipole. Why is it? Because their structure in a symmetrical range. So let's imagine. Imagine there's a good looking guy standing in the middle of girl A and girl B. So both the girls have the great personality and appearance and affection towards the guy. But the guy can pick either of the two. But in the way, the girls wants to first the, uh, they want to take the guy, either from left and from right, but this result will stay the same. So let's go for a further scientific example. The carbon dioxide, or its empirical formula, the CO2. Let's draw again the quadrant, where it's a middle is the carbon atoms, and from both sides is the oxygen atoms. Where carbon, its electron negativity is 2.5, and the oxygen atoms is 3.4. Now, which direction of the dipole moment do you think will occur? It is in the opposite direction. Now the question is, do you see any conflict? No, there is not, because the force exert from the left side is supported by the right side. So there's no room for conflict. Now, there's some certain difference in electron negativity. There's a difference in scale. We have so-called scale of difference in electron negativity. 
we presume that it begins at 0 0.5 to 1.6. But in order for to do that, we have this in a scale of, if not in the scale, we consider them as ionic bonding. So let's let's review earlier the, uh, the given compounds earlier, which is the H2O. Their difference in electronegativity between the hydrogen and the oxygen is 1.3. Are in the scale? Yes. How about carbon dioxide between carbon and oxygen? It is 0 0.9. Are in the scale? Yes. So both water and, and carbon dioxide are in the scale. So meaning we can determine them if they are polar or non-polar. So there are some certain substances that can be are out of the scale but can be considered as polar and non-polar. Because there are some polar substances but non-polar bonding. And non-polar substance but polar bonding. Are you confused yet? No. Because we are here to talk about to determine them if they are polar or non-polar. So now you see, we are about now to summarize the, the polar and non-polar. In polar, they are in a symmetrical arrange. The bond is opposing. And they are like this of slide. How about non-polar? They are in a symmetrical arrange. The bond is not opposing and they share an equal charge. So that's it. My partner will give you now a short piece. Hi, let me give you a short piece if you really understood the bad topic. Tell whether they are polar or non-polar. Give their difference and their negativity and draw the depot moment and correct direction. Okay, are you ready? Okay, number one, it is a pyramidal structure. Number two, it is a T-shaped structure. Number three, it is in a trigonal planar. And number four, it is on square pyramidals. And last but not the least, number five, it is an octahedral structure. Okay, time's up. Hope you enjoy watching this video. Comment down your answer and please don't leave a like. Thank you.